This week we're back on our home courts in Malibu, taking on crosstown rivals UCLA. They've been one of the greatest teams in the history of college tennis, winning the NCAA title multiple times, and recruiting future ATP stars like Mackenzie McDonalds, Maxine Cressy, and Marcos Giron. The past year the team hasn't been as good as it might have been when they won the title, but nonetheless they have some great players in the top 500 ATP. And when two LA schools play each other, it's always a battle. As usual, we had our doubles warm-up before jumping into the match, where we do some drills with two up, two back, warm-up returns, and then play some doubles point before we start, as there is no warm-up in college tennis matches. We start off doubles with the right foot, at least in our service games. We are playing Govin Nanda, who plays one for them in singles and is formerly top 400 DP, and Jeffrey Fraskin on court three. One thing that was not working well today were my returns, and my footwork was pretty poor too. We all hold the first three games, and now we're getting in the groove of the match a little bit, testing out their volleys, and coming up with great shots like this lob to win us the rally. Along with my returns though, my volleys were also nowhere to be found. We're facing this deuce point in the fourth game, and we really don't want to get broken, and then chase the entire set. And at this point I'm pretty much just watching the point, hoping my partner wins it for us. Which he thankfully does. So we just thought to ourselves, how about a little momentum shift here? You know, I was hoping to put away this volley and I don't do quite enough and just on the reach he defends the middle from our forehand. The smash doesn't quite do it either, but a short volley finally does the job. We try to put pressure here at 1530, but I missed the return just wide. It would have been huge if it just clipped the line. At 30 all we put ourselves in a good position as I get a forehand to go inside out on. And then, I pull the trigger to go inside in and he misses the volley, giving us two break points. But as I said, returns were poor today. Missed this one in the net, and the deuce, he serves well out wide, and we can't really do much to save ourselves. No big worry, however, we're still on serve, you know, 40-30 here, trying to make it 3-all. Uh, I get this foreign inside out here, and then we see some wee tennis here at the net a little bit. And then we switch over, I hit a back in middle, and the slow foreign passing shot, which he misses the volley on. Yeah, as I was saying before, unfortunately, you know, it wasn't my best day for doubles. Balls were a bit off, moving, and again, judgment as well here. I leave this ball, which bounced inside the line. After another hole with four free down, and I watched this four and inside in by him go past me. We're now lost 30. On lost 30, we play with a second serve, and he hits a return right at me. I managed to make it somehow, but, you know, the lob after that is not good enough, and we try to put up another lob, but, but it doesn't do the job, and he closes the smash. It's tough when you go down low 40 in college tennis because it's not three break points but it's actually four break points because there's no add. But here luckily we managed to save this first one. But the second one he hits his back and return right on the line and I was really hoping it was going to go out but it does clip unfortunately. Yeah so now it was a problem because 5-3 we only have this game to break and again my returns nowhere to be found. Outside the alley not, not a good return at all. 15 all here we try to scramble a little bit you know lift this slob up. And then my partner hits the foreign, but again, it looks like they can predict our moves and he plays a short volley winner. So we're three match points down and what we didn't need was a good serve tee and yeah, the lob return isn't good enough. It just closes another smash and lose at test 6-3. I think it wasn't one of our best performances for sure. My volleys were nowhere to be found and my forward was also poor. I think that those things went hand in hand. Uh, but yeah, we were just determined to bounce back in singles now. In singles I got moved up to number 2 and my opponent was Giacomo Ravelli, British player with an ATP ranking of 1461 and a UTR of 12.68. He had a similar game to me I would say, like playing a lot of forehands and dictating the game so it was really a matter of who was going to do it first and who was going to make less unforced errors. But yeah I find myself low 30 here and I'm trying to make him miss and he does with his foreign cross so now it's low 40 and have 4 breakpoints opportunities. He second serves and I play this good foreign return deep. He goes for a cross and yeah, I got very lucky here. Uh, yeah, so I'm up 1-0 with a break now. Again, as I was saying, the key was to dictate the game, move him around my foreign, because we both didn't like running or moving that much. This foreign cross is what I needed to get the upper hand and after I switch, he plays the back and short, so I'm able to come in. He wasn't gonna let me be in control every time though, obviously. As you can see, he is aggressive here on my second serve, and I need to stay calm to flip it and not overdo it. This volley sets me up quite nicely for the smash. A good T serve always helps, and despite choosing the wrong side to attack, I still get away with it. At 15.30 the next game, I was trying to extend the lead, and getting a double break would be massive. He had a good foreign, I think it's one of his better shots was pushing me outside with it like he does here. 
I stayed solid trying to find depth on my backhand side, waiting for opportunity to flip the point. I'm on the run once again, but his next approach is not the best and I'm able to hit this huge passing shot cross court, which honestly felt amazing. That point put me back in the game, and I get two opportunities to double break. Nothing special here, just hitting hard on my foreign looking for pace and depth, and eventually he breaks down over the backhand. At this point I was getting a good idea of how to play him, and break him down, because similarly to myself, as long as I had him on the run, I could hit foreign from wherever I was, and if I stayed consistent I would earn chances to finish forward, just like I do here. Some mistakes still started showing up, and suddenly we were on deuce, and the last thing I want to do is throw away my lead. He kinda camps on the backhand side hitting insides out and inside in, and I don't hit foreign for the rest of the point. And yeah, that's not a good indicator whether I'm gonna win or lose the point. And yeah, he goes with the inside in and I can get there. I knew it was still very possible to break him though, and that's why I'm trying to do this next coming game, as I know if I can get to deuce, maybe he has some pressure to worry about. We kinda remain neutral in this rally, he tries to push me with the foreign but he stays deep, so I also have to be careful sometimes. Eventually I try to do something special taking this back on the rise, but I miss it in the net. Nonetheless, I'm still up a break, and the serve came to rescue me, as it helped me set up this foreign approach. And then the smash, which climbed over me more than I thought it would. Great chance comes in 4-2 to retake the double break lead. And we are both playing the same game here, trying to take control of the foreign. I just can't find that much of an angle to open down the line and he pushes me out first with a short angle and I can't get it on the court. 15.30 the next game is not where you want to be, he was already in the match game wise, definitely gonna want him to get in the match score wise too. Uh, I needed a clutch point here and I do play an excellent rally, top off I just volley winner. Needless to say at 30 all it was another crucial point. I noticed he had barely missed any foreigns the last games, so if I was gonna hit there it was just to make him run or just to hit, try and hit a winner. I didn't want to engage in those cross court rallies as much anymore. Take it to the back end turns out to be the right decision, as finally he misses. I hold to go up 5 3, but he's right on my tail and holds as well to make it 5 4. A good T serve always helps, as I always say, and this foreign line is the reason why I love playing tennis. So, what do I do on the first set points? I serve wide and attack on the foreign, which went well. It's 40-30 now and I have two set points, and I could tell he was starting to play better and gain confidence, so I needed to take that away from him by closing the set immediately. Despite moving him around to try to hit as many foreigns as possible, I can't really find angle or depth, not sure if I was tight or I expected him to miss or what was going on. But eventually I decided to hit a back end, which is usually a terrible decision. But I get lucky as despite it being pretty short he just misses the approach wide, handing me the set. The second set I needed a good start, and I actually get it for once, as I break him first game. But I never played any matches without causing trouble myself, so the next game I'm facing two breakpoints. The plan is the same, stay solid until I find the opportunity to flip the point and come forward. That doesn't really happen here, but it does miss the last four and which for me works just as much. After holding I get another opportunity to break him, and I play this running four and sliding as if I was on clay here, but it gets the job done as it sets me up for the next pass. 3-0. This set, unlike the first one, I was in good position to consolidate my double break. I'm up 40-15 and I could feel that he was about to play short any second now from my pressure. I hit this 4 and taking time away and hit a winner. 4-0 now. Getting into this game just trying to see what will happen and maybe he would give me something for free, that was my mindset. Sometimes when I look at my forward work on my back end it looks like I'm not even trying, which I don't know, it's pretty weird, but anyway. Yeah, I don't mind a slice cross here because I know I can destroy a foreign on the next ball. And there it is, putting me up in the game. At lot 30, I just keep my mindset up deep until I can push hard. And yeah, I'll just let you watch this point. The break in now is gonna be easy. Big foreign return on his feet and easy put away for an next ball. Oh, never mind. Now it was break time. Another approach by him after a good serve, and I use this slow backhand to set up this banana shot down the line to go up 5 0. 
My first match points comes on induce point. I don't try to do anything special, just stay physical and move him around. And after his fish is foreign, he puts it in the net, giving me the win 6-4, 6-0. I think overall good match by myself, straight two to my identity, and I did a lot of damage with my serve plus one, which is always helpful. Also, his game didn't put me too much in trouble, as I like players who give me pace, so the rallies had good rhythm. Definitely had a better performance than my doubles, and surely better footwork and volleying. My job was not done yet though, as I now had to go and support my teammates. Meanwhile, on the other courts, it was a dogfight. After my match, we won two more singles, yeah! and they won two. So we were tied at 3 all, and it came down to the final court. Despite having three match wins in our favor, we lose on court 3, 7, 5 in the third. And that was simply heartbreaking. Very tough loss, especially because it was a very good performance overall by all our guys, compared to the last matches. But I guess it's back to the drawing board after this one.